So how can we then apply these techniques, this approach within the context of this project? Okay, so uh, improvisation is a technique, if you like, or an art form, but is used in many, many different countries. But when you start looking at uh, improvisation manuals or books on the topic, you realize that in different countries, the same exercises come back often under different names, but essentially they have the same exercises. So for example, for this um, project, uh, I started with a, an exercise that was a warm-up exercise in improvisation to take into account the different participants and to make them aware of whom they're working with. And that was uh, an improvisation exercise that is called you in English, but in other languages it's called something else. And it, it, it's simply uh, a nice breaking exercise to learn the names of participants. So you're in a circle and then you choose somebody that will, you will talk to. And this person becomes your you. And then that you chooses a you and so on. So if there's 20 people in a circle, you can imagine that he goes into a chain and then everybody has to do it one more time. So you, 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 you have to remember whom you're talking to every time. And that helps listen to people, talking to people, identifying people. And it sounds very easy, but it takes a while. The larger the group, uh, the longer it takes because people might be uh, focusing on the task, thinking, oh, I need to choose someone. I need to remember that person. And while they're doing this, they don't even look at the person they have identified as their you. And so when you do it again, they have forgotten who they look like. And that breaks the chain and the exercise fails. And that's only an example, but the beauty of it is that it fails. And people, the collective can learn about this failure. Why didn't it work? And it's not to blame an individual or another. It's more to understand, ah, okay, how can we make it work all together? How can we help one another so that this chain carries on? Knowing that to complexify the exercise, after you have done the chain with you, 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 you ask people to assign a, a name of a city to somebody choosing somebody else. So in the group, you have somebody who will be your you and somebody else who will, who will be your Roma or your Helsinki. It's better to use cities that are not attached to the participant in question mm -hmm. because that's cheating a bit. <laughs> and then you do it. But imagine 20 people who have to remember two people. That's easy. Most of the time, it doesn't work. And then again, people have to think, okay, how can we make it work together? So improvisation, it doesn't matter which exercise you take. You can adapt any kind of exercise you want. What matters is that most of the time, it will fail. Or it will fail at some point. It will not be a nice theater scene that is wrapped up with a beginning, a middle, and an end. It will go for a certain time while people are listening to one another, while, while people are playing the game, while, while people are switched on. And at some point, it will fail, whether it's a collective exercise or one-to-one -one or a small scene. And that's from this moment of failure that you can learn collectively how can we make it work. And you try again and it fails again, but you learn to listen more and to be with each other and focused, switch on, and so on. That's why I think that uh, learning these skills, not preparing anything, Trusting one another and trying to make it work collectively is what we need in time of crisis, perhaps. And where do we find those examples of activities and exercises? So there are open sources online. There are a lot of um, websites with improvisation. So depending on the country you live, there will be a league of improvisation as well. So improvisation league where people uh, have matches and uh, teams compete with one another. And there are often... Uh, improvisation teachers or coaches who are very happy to share the exercises that they've done and the variations because the exercises are always the same but depending on your public on your uh, on the people you're working with the different projects you might want to change or adapt the, the the exercises a little bit but most exercises is about jumping in being given a situation and 
not preparing and see what happens to you. How do you reply to someone that you listen to? How do they reply to you? And the rule, the universal rule of improvisation across the world is yes. If somebody suggests something, you say yes. So if somebody says we are uh, in the Arctic, you don't say, oh, no, 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 we are in the equator. No, you say, yes, we are in the Arctic and. So the rule is yes and. We are in the Arctic and I can see a palm tree. And somebody replied, no, no, there's no palm tree. No, say, yes, yes and this palm change. tree is due to climate change or this palm tree is full of uh, monkeys, etc. Yes and. And that's a rule for any kind of exercise anywhere in the world about improvisation. And that's about this rule is an ethics. It's about listening to somebody and going along with their stories. Which is actually a great learning point for this project because it's about actually finding agreement even when agreement seems impossible. Exactly. And also what is important to, 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 to remark is that it's not saying yes blindly to anyone or anything. It's just to say yes and so that you can then shape the story in a way you like as well. You're not a passive consumer. So, and you can spot in improvisation very quickly people who try to be leaders. And it fails because if you lead, that means you're not listen, listening to others. Mm -hmm. So there is never somebody who can lead who for much uh, uh, for much of the exercise, the leadership is passed to one another. And that's why it's good, a good skill to have yeah, in times great. of crisis. So you don't follow someone blindly. You build the story together and it's a co-leadership. 